What's going on, everyone? It's RGB Tech back here again. Day by day, Windows emulation just keeps getting better for Android devices. In today's video, we're taking a look at the latest WinLater CMOD 13.1 update. Here's their official GitHub page. And this is officially the best Windows emulator for Android gets major performance. Let's go over to the releases section. This update comes with some exciting changes and a lot of improvements with a focus on performance, reliability, and stable FPS. The ALSA reflector has been improved. There's a universal CPU overhead reduction to eliminate bottlenecks during emulation, and a new graphics wrapper has been added. We are also getting several new features along with a huge number of bug fixes for smoother performance. They've fixed input control issues, improved gyro zeroing for motion controls, updated the core, refreshed assets, and the list goes on. So, you can download the app package directly from here. Once you have it, just install it. I've already installed WinLater on this, and for today's test, I'm using the Realme GT7 Pro, powered by the Snapdragon 8 Elite with the Adreno 830 GPU and 16 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM. So, I'll close everything and let's get started. As usual, open WinLater and allow permission access. Here we get a message saying that the system files need to be updated. In this update, you can also migrate data with the Saves Manager, as well as migrate shortcuts. Let's continue. All right, it's installed. Let's go to the menu. And here they've added more new features, but first let's head to Settings. As usual, set the Box64 preset to Performance. Here, I'll create a custom performance preset. In that, set Safe Flags value to zero. Then apply the custom preset. Most settings are the same as before, including big picture mode, which we've already seen. So leave everything to default. Here, we also got a controller option where you can use the latest controller overhaul feature to connect multiple controllers and play PC games with friends right on your Android device. There's also the saves feature where you can register a save file directory from any container. For example, if you're playing GTA, you can locate its save folder and add it here. Now, let's add a new container. Set your preferred screen resolution. Remember, always prefer lower for better performance. Set Wine version to Proton 9 x86-64. Select the new graphics wrapper version 2. That's been added in this update. In configuration, the graphics driver is set to system based on this phone's 8 Elite chip. The same also applies for Mali GPU users. If you're using an Adreno 7 series GPU, choose the Adreno 762 driver or Turnip. For Adreno 6 series, use the Turnip 25R3 driver. Adreno tools. Turnip is already checked. In DXVK, set version to 1.10.3 Async and enable Async, though the DXVK version can vary depending on the game. The audio driver is set to the new ALSA reflector. In registry keys, set renderer to Vulkan. For GPU name, I'll choose GTX 1080 Ti since I'm on a high-end device, but you can leave this at default. It's optional. Set video memory to two to four gigabytes. Now go to advanced. Apply the custom box 64 preset we created earlier and set startup selection to essential. Save the container. Let's boot the container. And there we go. This time there are no additional options like it's completely clean now. If we swipe back, there are more new options like relative mouse movement to keep the pointer in its actual position on screen. In input settings, you still have your usual control options, plus the controller manager and motion controls, where you can enable analog stick gyro motion. Display settings are the same as before. System settings still include task manager. And now you can even pause and resume the entire system container. Now it's time to test performance. As usual, here I'll add game shortcuts to the container. Now let's exit the container. Go to shortcuts section. The settings are same as we configured on the container. Now let's load God of War. Here I'll turn off Wi-Fi. And there we go. And as you can see, we are getting a stable FPS, like it's much more stable this time, sitting around 35 to 40 FPS on average with default original settings.
Now let's tweak some settings. Set motion blur to zero. And let's also set the AMD FSR to quality preset. And wow, look at it guys. It's more detailed. And still we are getting a constant FPS here. Now let's completely off the FSR, and let's see. All right, it still looks fine, and the phone is also getting warm at back. But here the CPU usage is not detected by Mango HUD meter. And here we are getting the same level of performance like on GameHub emulator. I even tested it on 4K resolution on this phone in my recent video. But still it's more stable like you can also try the same on the GameHub emulator, which I already tested on all type of devices on Mali, Adreno 6 and 7 series GPUs in my recent videos. You can check out the links in description. Well, anyways, that's all for this video, guys. And this update offers more stable FPS, better performance, and a bunch of useful new features. So give it a try and let me know how it runs on your device. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.